This is the DMT One to One Show, episode six, on the 18th of April, 2013. I'm here today with uh, David Cerno and Tim Anderson from the company Timmy the Terror. So, hi guys, and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Good. How's it going? Thanks for having us on. Great. Thank you. Thanks for for joining us from LA. And uh, so, first of all, I want to ask you, uh, what is Timmy the Terror, and and, and uh, how did it start out? Go ahead, Tim, Tim. You sure, Timmy the Terror is. Uh, a platform that we came up with as as David and I saw revenue and sales and the music business in general starting to really struggle and suffer coming to terms with the digital age uh, and the uh, invention of the mp3 and streaming and downloading so Timmy the Terror is a platform that allows people to make money from actually giving away their content, whether yeah. it's music, videos, books, photos. We're trying to open it up to pretty much all different types of content. And then we help people uh, monetize it by having ad-supported uh, mm -hmm. content, taking that ad revenue, and then paying it out to the people who give those stuff away for free. So people who are providing videos, songs, books, and photos as they give it away on our site. Yeah. We take money from advertising and pay them so they can build a career, survive, make money from their from their goodies. Of and course. it's free for everybody. It's free for the people who just want to consume content, and it's free for the people who want to give away content. Um, it's still in its infancy. As of now, we're giving away 100% of the net yeah. revenue. Yeah. We don't make any money, and we're not even really sure how we're going to make any money at this point. But we just know that it's kind of the right thing to do. Yeah that you can't really compete with free so we just decided to join and and allow people this opportunity to give everything away legally and for free and and hopefully make some money in the process sure and then and, and uh, taking a step back of course from the service i just wanted to to look at your background because uh, that's very relevant in in in, in looking at what timid the terror is and, and what it, it, you know it, it's aiming to become so david first of all uh y you worked as a solid music company so so what's your background uh, within the music industry I've been uh, a number of different things. I was a concert promoter here for a long time and then uh, did A&R for uh, a, a little company that was part of Universal and all the while was managing bands. Uh, and then probably about a decade ago, I started managing record producers and went and joined a company where I met Tim. Yeah. And I started managing Tim, who was uh, producing records at the time. So that's kind of my story has been managing, uh, the majority of my life in the music business has been managing record producers, songwriters, artists, and now mainly just songwriters, composers, record producers, yeah. and, uh, and then doing Timmy the Terror. Right. And uh, Tim, so you, you come from a creator's background uh, as well? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I was in a band called I'm a Robot in my 20s, and that was the early 2000s. Um, and got to experience the touring and making records and, and doing all that fun stuff in a band and, uh, and then became a record producer and a songwriter and still working on that um, and basically, yeah, always, you know, creating whether it's in a band format or as a producer. Um, so I come from that background into now working on Timmy the Terror and also working with artists and some different varying degrees and producing and writing. So all different types of creating and yeah. uh, producing. Yeah, sure. So in terms of like a te technology background, how, how does the, is the platform uh, formed and, and how did you build it? We hired people because we don't have a technology background. We just knew that we had a really good idea that we wanted to explore. Uh, we were able to raise some money, thanks to Tim, and uh, with that, we hired a great company out of Chicago called We Can't Stop Thinking, who yeah. were kind of the early uh, company that we entrusted with our idea, and they helped build the platform. And since then, we've done a couple little revisions, and the site still isn't exactly what we want it to be because we think that there is a, a better way for this service to work. And that's what we're working on now is kind of like the third generation of Timmy the Terror. Yeah. Um, but neither one of us have a technical background, but we've been fortunate that we've surrounded ourselves with a couple people that are good at what they do. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. Uh, and uh, uh, so, Tim, looking at uh, the creator side of things, uh, how do you think uh, creators will feel, uh, feel about the platform? You know, have you, have you spoken to a lot of people about it already? I'm, I'm sure you have. And, uh, you know, what is their take on the, uh, on the idea behind Team of the Terror, uh, but also on the, on the fact that they can actually get 100% uh, of the share of the, of the advertising revenue? 
Um, yeah, everyone agrees it's a great idea, and people. I mean, we're basically we're basically taking what exists now. This is something yeah. that we came up with as a concept, but it's really just the way our world works now. Music is free, videos, movies, anything you want that can be uploaded to the net. If you don't want to pay for it, you can find it for free. Yeah. Um, albeit, you know, pirated and probably in bad quality. But that's just what the internet um, sort of streamlined for content was it made it readily available. So we just decided to try to create something um, that would maybe take that and make it uh, work for the people creating s stuff and the other side too. Yep. We want things to be free. Um, we just want them to be also uh, monetized, yeah. and that's that's our idea. So every the people that I'm friends with who make stuff, who direct videos or write songs, um, think this is a great idea. And it's just about us making it work perfectly. So instead yep. of telling them this great idea, they see it and it functions and it works. Um, and it explains itself, and we're getting there. Um, we're we're in those beginning stages of, you know, we've explained it to people. We were at South by Southwest Interactive, and everybody who we explain the idea to agrees that it's a great idea, and that it's very necessary. Yeah. And um, so yeah, it's everyone's in agreement. It's a great idea, and now it's all about us just sort of presenting it in the right way, sure. so the platform speaks for itself. And of course, you know, as as Lydia mentioned earlier, yeah. At the moment, 100% of the, of the proceeds from advertising are, are going to the creators. So, of course, uh, you need to figure out some sort of way to create a valuable business for yourselves as well, because otherwise right. it's going to be difficult to keep a service going. So, so that's, that's, I guess, a big challenge for you uh, for the next few months, right? We have those ideas. Basically, um, we have that sort of figured out. Uh, we just we want this thing to work for the people using it first. Yeah, and we can we can spend a little bit of money and and not make much money until we make sure this thing works. Yeah. It's not about us. This is about everybody out there who creates things, who slowly but surely will have a tougher time surviving from that from that content, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we want to make the platform work. We think we can make some money for ourselves and make it a viable business as it goes along. Um, and everything changes. I mean, this is just the like first iteration of this idea. I don't sure. think YouTube thought they were going to revolutionize the way people listen to music when they yeah. created a video site, or be able to pay people, you know, for for putting up videos or just songs with lyrics or any of those things that really make YouTube as popular as it is. I doubt they really had that figured out 15 years ago. But things grow and change, and we just want to make sure that our our real core a philosophy of paying people, like making sure we help people get paid for what they've made. Yeah, we want to prove that, and then we'll find a way to make money after that. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, looking at creators versus uh, creators versus uh, users, of course, uh, they are both required to make a service like that work. So, mm -hmm. what's a major focus right now? Uh, is it uh, finding more creators to put content on the platform, or uh, still getting users to actually adopt it? It's definitely finding creators. We want to not only ha we we don't want our site to just be inundated with content. We want it to be uh, inundated with good content. So sure. we're being kind of selective, but we're also really encouraging people to put up their stuff and then prove that what we're doing is working and and working for them. But excuse me, right now our focus is content, content, content. We really, really, really want the best content on the internet. And uh, and then I think the, uh, the the consumers will come. Yeah, and, and and another opportunity, of course, is also widgetizing the experience in the sense that uh, if you can actually experience your content as, out from outside the Tim the Tower website itself, then it becomes right. an interesting play uh, with the advertising side as well uh, to be able to expose that to a different type of audiences. Is this something that you are considering, for example? Well, that's exactly uh, the next uh, iteration of Timmy the Terror is that it's not a destination anymore, that this is something like PayPal yeah. that lives in the background of everything that you're doing and it's a simple click and that uh, it, it attaches itself to wherever you're already comfortable giving away content and, yeah. uh, and then you've automatically monetized what it is that you're doing. So that's what we were referring to earlier. That's kind of our next mission. Our next goal is to make it that and obviously be mobile. Yeah, of course. And looking at uh, the ways you're promoting uh, the service as well, uh, you know, you mentioned in the prep uh, about a radio service such a hosting, so can you tell me a little bit more about that? 
Sure, Tim, you want to take that one? Yeah, we um, I have we have a relationship with a, a great online radio station that's a part of iHeartRadio, which is a massive sort of conglomerate. Um, the station was a very uh, influential and just credible uh, terrestrial radio station in Los Angeles called yeah. Indy 103.1. Uh, they went out of business about five years ago. They were on the air for about 10 years. And when they went out of, uh, when they went off the air, they decided to just keep it together, very pirate radio style from one guy's apartment yeah. uh, and switching into an online thing because that was free. And slowly but surely, they've built their listenership back up almost to where it was before. Wow, great. And it's really great. And it's a great sh uh, station. So I've had a show on there for about a year. And we've decided to create a show that is really sort of presented by TimIntheTerror.com. And the show is just sort of uh, us talking with people about great content, great things out there in the world, great music, great food, great movies, great books, whatever it is, you know not just pop culture, but things that uh, David and I and a couple of our friends each week can sort of just chew the fat and um, discuss. And I think it will hopefully, you know, tie back into what we're doing with the site. But more yeah. importantly, just kind of create this presence for the site on the radio station of, uh, you know, here's TimmyTheTerror.com, with sort of a little bit of the personality of the website <clears throat> um, informing this uh, talk show format show. Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. what we're doing with that. And then we invite right. our friends and guests. Uh, last week we had actor Jeremy Sisto, who's on a show uh, here called Suburgatory, and he's also in a band called, um, what are they called? Escape Taylor. Escape Taylor. And uh, he's a super, super talented guy and, and just great. And we invited another friend of ours from the music business, an A&R guy named Jeff Sosno, who's signed Wolf Mother and All American Rejects and a bunch of really... Uh, big and influential bands, and we just kind of you know, spoke about whatever was on our mind and uh, had a really great conversation. This week we have Brad Smith from Blind Melon and uh, I believe actor Lucas Haas. And then uh, the following week we have uh, a guy named Warren Etner who is a really, really famous manager here locally who's managed the Deftones, Rage Against the Machine, Quiet Riot, Faith No More. And we're just trying to invite interesting people within... Uh, the entertainment business okay. and uh, talk about whatever's on their mind, but uh, have it kind of sponsored by Timmy the Terror. Sure. And uh, do you know if the, the show's gone out as a, as a podcast as well or uh, accessible outside of the US uh, in any way? Yeah. Um, Not as a podcast, but it is accessible through oh, okay. Mohi. Mohi. The okay, site great. is www.mohik.com, M O H E A K. Yeah. And there's an app. And then also through iHeartRadio, you can stream the show. Our show, the TimmyTheTerror.com show, will be on at 9 a.m. Pacific time, West Coast, California, right. America. So noon, New York, 5 yeah. p.m. London. Right. Um, and then it will become available down the road as a podcast and also as like an archived show. And the first show will really air this coming Saturday sure. uh, with the guest Jeremy, uh, David mentioned, Jeremy Sisto and uh, Jeff Saws now. So this Saturday will awesome. be sort of the premiere. That's great, that's great. And uh, just to finish, you know, how do you find the LA scene in terms of tech? I know that, for example, South by Southwest, there were a lot of startups from LA, especially South Beach, that had their own like uh, event as well. Uh, so do, do you find yourself involved in, in, that, in that startup community as well? A little bit. Um, yeah, I, it's tough. Yeah, I, it's not. This is not the home of any kind of great technological movement or tech yeah. move. But there is a lot of uh, creative people here, and there's money here, and there is struggling business here. So um, I think that most people who have been really successful in the entertainment business start to look for new opportunities, and those are right now tech technology opportunities. So things are definitely happening. Um, but nowhere near the scale of like the Bay Area or San Francisco, yeah. of course. But yeah. you know, we're doing it uh, so we're really outside of it. It's good. Yeah, it's great. Well, thanks so much. And I would recommend uh, people to go and check out TimTheTower.com uh, to see what's going on over there. And I look forward to seeing what's going to happen in the next few months with the side. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Great. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on DigitalMusicTrends.com.